Prime Minister Scott Morrison visited a solar farm this month. Now, that should not be news, but as far as we can tell, that is the first time that Scott Morrison or any of his ministers has visited a new wind or solar farm in the three years since he became Prime Minister. Not that you'd know it because the way they're talking about the achievements in wind and solar to defend their rather modest climate ambitions, you'd think that'd be attending every one of the 100 or more than 100 wind and solar projects that have been opened over the last seven or eight years. But the reality is that since the coalition came into government, Apart from a visit by Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull to the Baal Cowdean solar farm in 2017, this is the first time that any coalition minister has bothered to turn up to such an opening. Now, normally they'd probably turn up to the opening of an envelope, but, um, and they very much like turning up at every opportunity at a coal mine, but not to wind and solar. The solar plant that Scott Morrison attended uh, was in the Pilbara, it's actually an off-grid solar farm, or it's actually on a grid that actually serves Australia's two richest people, Andrew Forrest and Gina Reinhardt, and their iron ore mines. Andrew Forrest spoke at the presentation there, and he was very effusive about wind and solar, and about the gigawatts of green hydrogen that he would create there. Massive wind farms, massive solar farms through the Pilbara. Scott Morrison managed to go through the whole press conference without mentioning solar once. Pretty unusual for being at a solar farm, but that's what he managed to achieve. But I think he's going to have to wake up to it pretty soon because wind and solar are changing the grid. We know from the coalition's own protestations that they are forming an increasing part of our grid and it's absolutely clear now that they are pushing down prices. And the good news is is that those prices are now being, those lower prices are now being enjoyed by consumers. They're finally flowing through from the wholesale electricity markets into the bills that go to households and businesses. And that's great news. And there's no reason to stop because as a major new report that came out from Carbon Tracker last week pointed out, there are massive amounts of wind and solar, enough to power the world in technical details, probably 100 times over. We don't need that much. But the remarkable thing is that Australia is the best place by, in a league of its own, in fact, on its ability to provide wind and solar, not just for its own resources, but also for major parts of the rest of the world. The battery of the world, they call it. That's a fantastic opportunity. And it really is so frustrating when Morrison turns up to the Biden Climate Summit where the world's biggest economy is doubling its targets, our biggest fossil fuel customer is improving its targets. One of our biggest allies, Canada, is also improving its targets. Yet we are doing very little because we worry about the economic cost. But it's not about economic cost fighting climate change now. It's actually about economic opportunity. It couldn't be any more clearer. We really hope that Scott Morrison does get to visit another solar farm. We hope that even at the press conference there, he'll even say the word solar. That'd be fantastic. The opportunities are there. It's time to seize them.